Okay, good morning. This isn't as fierce a rant as the other video of the day, but this is about uh, the strange energies from space that are uh, affecting the planet now and uh, will continue to do so for a number of years. I was off on the original estimate of how long uh, because I hadn't, I hadn't factored in a number of things that, that just bore you anyway. But hang on a second, let me swap over here. Okay, so we can see that down um, underneath the Two Tribes picture, um, it was from April of 2017 through 2034. It really should be 2039. Okay, and then the, the fade off goes until 2041. Um, overall, though, the weather patterns, the ice age, and those kind of things, the ending, it's like you can pick a date, you know, what date do you consider that you're out of the ice age, right? <laughs> it, it, absent a giant meteor coming down and shattering all of the ice like happened to us the last time, you know, when are we going to decide, oh, well, the ice age is over and now we're in the warming trend. That's only something that can be determined from hindsight on the other side of that warming trend developing. Uh, but the energies that are going to be affecting the two tribes here that are going to be fighting uh, is, uh, has been ongoing since, well, it's been ongoing for 40 years, probably. But it'll go through at least uh, 2039. I don't know that it's going to um, persist at the same level of intensity or at the same level of um, uh, uh, contention and interaction impact. Um, but the energies that are, gonna, that are essentially being funneled through humanity and splitting humanity in, a, in terms of how we're emotionally reacting to it will continue through 2039. And what's going on is that we've actually had a lot more energy come around the corona of the sun because the corona has shrunk. We're trailing behind the sun back here as the sun moves along in space. These energies are coming into the planet. Our, they're, they're in the, what we would think of as like the electromagnetic spectrum. They're in that range. And they impact our brains, which are emulsified oil antennae that feed our nervous system, causing hormonal changes in humanity, in humans at an individual level, and then collectively in humanity. And, it, and we find that these um, strange energies from space are repetitious in cycles. Uh, the cycles coincide with things that go on with the sun. They coincide with those weather disturbances caused on Earth and other planets because of the cycles going on in the sun. And uh, the energies coming around the sun that are impacting uh, humans are not new to uh, uh, to humanity, but they're new to us because it's been a long time since modern humans have been influenced by these um, what I'm terming strange energies from space. And uh, as a result of the at an individual level, the strange energies are causing uh, humans to have. Um, what are called pro-hormones, okay, like vitamin D. Vitamin D is triggered by sunlight, comes into the skin through the, the sunlight, the photons hitting the skin, triggering a reaction in the skin that takes cholesterol to perform an action that is catalyzed by the sunlight. And the process continues for 18 to 20 hours afterwards as, it, as the, the residual photons cause the cholesterol production doesn't happen instantly, you know, yet with the sun hitting you, it's not instantly vitamin D. It, it starts this process. The vitamin D, the sunlight is just the catalyst for it that, and the energy source that causes the cholesterol to convert basically over to a proto-hormone that we call vitamin D. Okay, so it's that kind of, of proto-hormone effect that is happening to humans now because of these extra energies that are coming down on the earth as the corona of the sun shrunk from 5,000 degrees Kelvin down to 3,000 degrees Kelvin, or as it is shrinking. And, and we notice coincidentally that the area of space that we're going through has caused the sun to be, which is a known variable star, to change from yellow to white. I'm one of those people that was born under a yellow sun. Okay, uh, we'll all die off, and then there won't be any more people on this planet whose bodies know what it is like to live under a yellow sun. 
The only people on the planet at that stage will be living under this much more intense white sun that will be shading towards blue-white over these next few years. It's not going to stay blue-white, and, and it relates to where the sun is in its great, um, I think they call it the uh, great annular or the, the great year. And it's a 26,000 year progression of the sun, um, of our sun in, a, in around the Milky Way galaxy. We're, we're doing this other little 26,000 year cycle as we go around like on a 10 million year cycle. And so as we go through this, this 26,000 year cycle, we encounter different areas of space that have basically have different kinds of space dust. And it causes the, um, the uh, ionized gas that is our corona, because our sun is not a nuclear bomb constantly th converting helium and, and hydrogen into energy. That's a bunch of horseshit. It's an ionized gas that is electrified. The nature of the gas changes with those particles that come into the gas, thus the change in the sun does not originate from the middle of the sun. Outward, it originates from the outward inward, and the sun itself is a, basically a giant ball of hematite, mostly iron. And, and the corona exists on the surface. The middle of the sun is not hot um, in terms of nuclear, that kind of thing. Um, it has, it's a, we, we need to get into that. But in any event, so these energies are coming around the sun. And as the sun itself changes, it puts out different frequencies. So all of humanity from this point forward, that everybody that's born now will be living under different solar conditions. And they will be a different uh, modern human. Uh, so all of modern humans, uh, since 13,600 plus years, and who knows how far back beyond that, 20,000, 30,000, 200,000, as is the case in some of the finds in California and along the West Coast, we find evidence of modern Homo sapiens sapiens having existed there as surface dwellers, not in caves, um, uh, 130,000 years back. We know that it extends even further because we think we've got some hints under that, and that next layer back there is on the other side of 200,000 years. So modern humans have lived on, on the planet here uh, over the last 200,000 years, and we've gone through these regular cycles of encountering different colored suns. But how long are we in each cycle is an unknown. It might be that the it takes the course of the Milky Way to actually change the color of the sun due to a solar cycle rather than the 26,000 year great year. Uh, this is not known nor is it ascertainable at this stage. We may be able to ascertain this later on, um, and it does make a difference for a number of different reasons. So see, it could be that every 26,000 years, we encounter white sun for a while, yellow sun for a while, slightly blue-white sun for a while, and slightly red sun for a while, right? And so, and that these are commensurate with these grand ages, the, the quartering of that great 26,000 year cycle. And it may be that that indeed does not happen. And that entire 26,000 year cycles may be spent in sections of space determined by our rotation around the Milky, with the Milky Way. And that is, it is that level of rotation that causes the sun to change. So it might be that it's been over 200,000 years since any modern human has lived under a white sun. And that maybe the last 200,000 years, we've all humans have lived under a yellow sun up until this point in time. It is not ascertainable. I believe it makes a difference for a number of, of uh, reasons in certain calculations of mine relative to basically what's going to happen. Because I'm a paranoid fuck and I don't want to just sit here and have shit roll downhill on me. I'd rather move, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so I'm not the wily coyote kind of guy. Um, anyway, so... Uh, some of the things that I had, had picked up out of the data, as you see from the cover of this report here, the Two Tribes report, uh, included the idea that these, these strange energies from space are going to cause us to split into the two tribes. Now, it's not exactly two tribes, right? There's basically what I was attempting to convey was that there's going to be a phenotypical which is to say, not racial, but, but um, certain genes within certain types of people uh, that will cause them to react 
in specific ways or in general ways to the specific energies coming in from space. And so the idea is that we'll get an incoming energy and we'll have a bifurcation of most humans in terms of how they respond to the energy, right? And so, um, so uh, we can we can just follow it on binary trails, and you you can see that there's various different ways to look at it that will influence your thinking about yourself and your own reaction to these these uh, strange energies from space. And so one of the things to to note is: Are you conscious of this? Uh, of these strange energies from space affecting you, or are you not conscious of the energies affecting you? So. It could be that, that you are aware of it and you will react and do things for your body to try and um, uh, ameliorate, moderate, alter these effects. It could be that you're going to be totally unconscious of this. You're going to think it's organic. You're going to internalize it and you're going to react as though it's coming from inside you. Now, so, so basically we have the, if you're conscious of it, regardless of how it affects you, or if you're unconscious of it, regardless of how it affects you, there will be entirely different pathways. So if it was good and it affected you here, you would react to it a, specific, a different way than if it was good and you were unconscious of it. So, um, um, so, uh, so you might, if you were... Uh, conscious of the effect, note that it's going to pass, right? And so you're not going to get wrapped up in it too much. You're not going to take it too much to heart when you see that your emotions are going to change as a result of the strange energies from space impacting and causing hormonal changes in your body. You're going to say, oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I wonder how long this will last. I wonder what its peak will be. Um, you know, I wonder how it's going to um, alter my thinking going forward because that's where it will hit you is in your thinking, in your perceptions. And so we get to the point where uh, we understand the energies are coming in. We understand that um, that there's that, that these are not uh, that we don't put judgment on them. So in other words, the energy is just there. It's like sunlight. Sunlight's good, and sunlight can be bad, right? Just like um, uh, we have these things, right? And we have. We have these two states in reality, too much of something and too little of something. So, so too much oxygen will kill you. Too little oxygen will kill you. Too much, uh, let's just keep it in that. Too much water will kill you. Too little water will kill you, right? Too much. Oh no, that'd be. Hang on a second. That's E. So P. Too much photonic energy will kill you. Too little photonic energy will kill you. You know rickets. I mean, if you're just like shut down in a cave and you uh, you don't get any sunlight, you will die. You won't won't progress very well. So and too much heat. Uh, you know. So so um, too much heat. Uh, uh, too much cold, uh, too much pressure, uh, um, too much pressure, um, too little pressure, you know, and, and so it goes on and on and on. But basically, it's the same item. If you just have too much of it, you're bad. And if you have too little of it, you're bad. So the, the obvious conclusion here is that as duh all of these great thinkers come to there is a middle ground a middle way uh, right and that is to get the goldilocks zone get just the right amount or or ameliorate or moderate yourself so that you you enjoy the benefits of just the right amount in other words get rid of the excess and pull up some if you don't have enough right it's like covers right so anyway um so we, we progress here, and we see that if you're unconscious of this, then, then everything that happens to you as a result of these energies, you will internalize, and you will assume 
that it's all internally generated. If over here, on the conscious side of things, you will recognize that you can no longer accurately tell what is being uh, generated by your own uh, hormonal state and, and the changes in your thinking, etc., being organic or original and so on, and you'll have to assume that there is some level of uh, external interaction, right? External pressuring. Well, let's just call it pressure. And so there's going to be some external pressure on your, uh, on your whole body, on your whole physiology that will alter your thinking. You have to be aware of this. And so you, you will alter that thinking in terms of you'll react to the thinking, you'll be aware of it, and you will change your um, ability or you'll change your um, uh, monitoring such that you can sort of catch it in real time as you're going along, right? And so it's kind of like, all right, so it's kind of like this hormonal stew that is um, being generated in humanity is on a stream that we cannot control. All we can do is recognize that we're watching or participating in the stream and uh, be aware that, that, it's partic that such participation will change us as we go forward here, right? But we can see that this bifurcation here, uh, conscious... Or conscious of it, unconscious of it, is going to cause some interesting interactions. And so um, you're going to find a lot of people that are um, in the unconscious side. All right, so here's a way to characterize it. For a second, let's go back to our scene here. We see the two tribes that are at war. These two tribes, uh, I want to tell you, both of them exist over here. So here's one tribe, and here's the other tribe. Okay, and you'll notice from our, our picture here that we have the two um, uh, each looking at a middle point, right? Because if you're going to gaze at your enemy, uh, uh, you're, you're basically, you're both looking towards the center. And so we have this situation where both of these tribes are over here and are unconscious of the hormonal impacts that are driving on them. Now, this is a bifurcation. This is an even split in terms of conscious or unconscious. But this is not even in terms of demographics. The vast majority of humans are likely to be over here. And relatively small number of humans are over here. However, if you're conscious of this and you're aware that it's affecting you specifically in specific ways, you might also feel the energy and you might become aware of the energy that is causing this split right here. It is making all of these people here be very, 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 very aggressive, right? And these people over here be very aggressive. Uh, you may become aware of that. And so you, being conscious, you would feel that energy coming on down here and you'd become aware of it right there. And you'd feel it in your body, and it's starting to affect you, and so on. And then you'll take up whatever practices you're going to use to uh, moderate and control this. And you don't get into this state, but you will be able to observe the people that do. Now, this is where um, the unscrupulous among the conscious people will choose moments to direct both tribes against each other for their benefit. Not everybody that's conscious of this energy is a good guy, is a good actor. Some of them are, are hyping up the mobs, put, pitting them against each other to get power and all this other shit, right? Um, and, and that's the situation at the moment. And so there are people over here that are not um, participants that are aware of the conscious energies, they get down here, they diffuse them, they can see that what's going on over here, but they don't participate. They don't, don't attempt to muck about and inflame these energies. And they're, they're, um, 
interaction in humans. Uh, and they stay over here and they become a little bit more, you know, uh, let's see if I can do that, a little bit more peaceful, right? So let's see. Uh, Aikido symbol for mind body harmony. Mind body harmony. Um, so they get peaceful, you know. Yeah, you know. I mean, within the hormonal changes, right? You can react to them. You can use them. So males, for instance, you get that. <laughs> okay, and you're going out. And you exercise. You burn off some of that. You convert some of those uh, proto-hormones into real hormones, turn them into testosterone, and burn them up in exercising, doing shit. And that's probably one of the reasons everybody, in the, at least a lot of the males I know, are quite a bit batshit crazy as having been locked up because we've been flooded with these energies over this past year, as you may note, right? I mean, things got really batshit crazy. And I mean that quite accurately, batshit. Um, so... You know, one of the things you might do is to make sure that you're in optimal uh, harmonic balance with your inbuilt human nature, human body nature, before any of the energies get at you. That is to say, make sure you got your vitamin D, make sure you got your vitamin C, make sure you got your vitamin E, vitamin A, uh, K, and blah, 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 right? that you've got good nutrition in you, that you're, you don't have any lack that can be um, triggered by demands placed on your body by these pro-hormones. Because these pro-hormones that are coming into us, they will react in, in traditional kinds of ways in our body because they can't, our body can't react any other way. So in other words, we can't have a hormone that suddenly appears in us that's based on a mineral we don't already have. So if you're going to get a hormone in your body, it's going to be based on existing minerals that, um, you know, and it'll have iron, zinc, magnesium, that kind of thing. It will have those forms of um, communication with the rest of the body. Uh, and it couldn't, for instance, have zirconium, right? <laughs> or, or, you know, uh, I, I can't think of other, any other outrageous example. But in other words, your body will react with the, the chemicals and, and its own nature. And uh, you need to make sure that, that you have those um, at optimal levels that will help your body react to all of this kind of shit, right? So we're getting energies. And so, I mean, it's really simple, guys. It's kind of like um, if we were getting strange energy from space in the form of constant yellow um, dust, right? We would take action. We'd all wear bandanas against it so we didn't have to breathe the dust. And we'd carry around little umbrellas so that the dust would fall off and wouldn't hit on our bodies. And it would be, it'd be tedious. It'd be annoying. Uh, it would alter things, uh, you know, perhaps make us all claustrophobic, etc. But we would be able to deal with it because we could see it and we would be aware of it. Here we're not able to see it. And so this vast amount of humanity um, over here is indeed, let's just do that. These bastards are all getting quite a bit pissy. Uh, uh. Uh, because they're not aware, they can't see it coming down as yellow, yellow dusts or whatever, right? They're not reacting to it. And they're wondering what the hell's going on. Not only is everybody acting crazy, but I don't feel right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, all right. So they're probably not quite internalizing it that way. They may not even be conscious of it at all. Uh, but they are reacting to it even if they're not conscious of it. So, uh... We have many examples, by the way, you know, herd animals. If you've ever been out hunting, uh, especially on a very large herd, you got to sneak up on them really carefully. And when one of the buggers gets a sense that you're there, it's instantly communicated to the whole herd in this magical way, and the whole herd takes off, right? And they're not even sure what the hell spooked them, but they're not going to stand around and ask questions. They're just going to run. Um, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, <laughs> a, a, a lot of funny, funny jokes about, about that kind of stuff, right? Um, 
So anyway, so the point of the strange energies from space is we're now at the two tribes period. The two tribes antagonism uh, may persist into 2034. Maybe it'll go to 2039, which is the point at which the new calculations are made for the, the fading of the, the movement in space kind of thing. Uh, but, but maybe it won't last that long. There seems to be a compression factor running in here where these strange energies are altering, um, altering our perception of time. All right? So, so a point of time, not a, uh, our perception of time, not a perception of view. And the... Uh, Time relationship appears to be, at this stage, compressing events into sh into smaller and smaller, or into um, uh, much more dense packing of, of events. I don't think that that's going to get. Um, at this stage, it doesn't appear that there's evidence that that part of it is going to um, get more intense. Right. Um, it, may persist at this level. So it may be that the, because of the, and it, and it could be that because, of, all right, so as part of this period of time, you have the, um, hang on a second. So there may be a physical cause for this, all right? So uh, we have the sun. Yes, I don't want a black sun. Hang on a second. I don't want a black sun, but I'll make the other ones here. So we have the sun, and it's moving through space, and all of the planets Mercury, Mars, Mars, oops, no Mars, Mars is smaller. Okay, and so we have all of the planets back here trailing behind the sun, basically in this cone as we move through space. And um, our movement through space causes, and the shrinking of the sun's corona allows for more energy to come around that corona and strike the planets. And one of the effects of this is planetary expansion because the planets have at their core, at the core of the planet is a plasma. Plasmas trap energy. They trap um, gamma rays, all the high energy particles of all kinds. They just grab it because of the giant magnetic fields that they create. The, the, as the energies come on in, they gravitate to the, the core and they get trapped in the plasma. And the plasma is a semi-material uh, state of matter. That is to say, it's quasi-matter, but it is still matter. And that is, you know, matter, right? And so it's a stage beyond a gas, uh, beyond an ionized gas, but nonetheless, it's still within the range of a gas, gaseous substance. And even within that, though, plasma behaves at a level of um, fluid dynamics, while calculable, is entirely different than fluid dynamics involving uh, electromagnetic energies or fluid dynamics involving fluids. Uh, but nonetheless, it fits within the category that where you can apply fluid dynamics to it. And one of the things that happens is if you get enough of these gamma ray particles and stuff accumulating over time, the plasma increases because they don't go out the bottom. They don't go out the other side, right? So if a, if a gamma ray comes on down and, it, and it, here's Earth and a gamma ray comes on down and goes like this, it'll go right through the planet, right? And if you're standing up here and you're a big bastard like that, it'll go right through your head. And, and you won't even know it's there unless it, you know, happened to hit a neuron when you're trying to use it. And then maybe it's like, okay, where'd that thought go? But in any event, though, it'll go right through the planet. But if it comes down here and gets, gets and hits the plasma, the magnetic field around the plasma, it gets trapped. And so at some point, the plasma, well, the plasma constantly increases. It puts pressure internally on the planet. The planet has these fractures that we call tectonic plates, and they break apart and new matter comes out of the plasma and it fills in these gaps, but it makes the planet bigger. As the planet gets bigger, as the planet gets bigger, here it drops back ever so slightly in the orbit. Okay? 
not because of weight or anything. It has to do with mass, or, and it has to do with the uh, intricacies of center of gravity and the fact that all planets in here all share a common barosphere with the sun and then hundreds of intersectional barospheres among the planets in their orbit temporarily and some more permanently. And these intersectional barospheres each have their own center of gravity, all of which are affecting all the planets all the time, thus changing their relationships to each other subtly over time. Now, usually we don't care about the changing nature of the relationships of the planets because we're talking a foot, right? So Mars moves basically its center over a foot over time relative to Earth in this particular dynamic. We don't care. We can still see Mars. We, if we wanted to shoot something there, we can still get something there because that difference of, of a foot, while it creeps up on us, is still measurable and we, we understand that. But we don't take into account when we're doing maths or calculations, the growing size of all of the planets due to, and Mars doesn't grow, by the way, because it doesn't have a plasma core anymore. At least that's the thinking. It has not restarted a plasma core in it. Um, uh, and I can get into that some other time. But, uh, but so most of the planets grow, Mercury and uh, Mars being the exceptions that I'm aware of. And uh, the, the, um, those growth of the, the growth of the planet causes us ultimately, because of these barysphere interactions, to have a longer orbitable, orbital period. All right, so we've actually, we've got 365.25 days. And this is the official, official dumb understanding down to two decimal places of the annular circle of Earth back here behind the sun. However, it's actually creeping up, and it used to be not so long in the past, 360 days. Not so long before that, it was 270 days. And so we've had, at least insofar as modern humans are able to determine, we've had two significant shiftings in, in and these are not, you know, various different theories are put forward as to why this happened and all of that kind of crap. But basically, it's because we've incrementally grown over time, and as this has happened, we've always ended up lengthening the um, time in the annular uh, progression, you know, around the sun in our orbit. And there's no reason to suspect that that's changing. But it, there is a reason to suspect that we're moving up to like 372 days in our year, which is going to affect our, as a result of the, um, these energies, the expansion, where we're at in space, and how far back in the, in the orbit here. As you go back further, we note something very key about this whole idea here, right? And that is that as you go back further in the orbit here and you get into some of the big gas giants and even into, out into Neptune and Pluto, what do you find about all of these guys, right? Neptune and Pluto are not as big as the big gas giants. But all of these guys are slow because they're out here orbiting way out in the back end of the cone, spinning way out here where we're spinning around in little circles like that, and Mercury is spinning around like that. And look from, from up here looking this way, right? And so, uh, you know, so it is within the operational parameter of the um, conical nature of being drug around that we see the, that, it, that there's a consistency in all of this. And so it seems that we actually do have a temporal effect that's, that is perceptible at this stage, within humans anyway, based on linguistic clues and a number of other things, that is coincidence, co coincident with uh, these strange energies from space, right? And... It is, it is having a point of time change for all of us. It may be that that is hormonal. I don't know. Um, it's sure showing up in the language a lot. Now, as a result of the uh, changes here, we've got, um, you know, all kinds of weird, <laughs> all kinds of weird shit going on. 
uh, I suspect that this summer we're going to see um, just because of the alignments. So um, if we are off in one side of the sun or one side of the sun, and we have a curious statement here of things at this point, and that is that, that we have all of the planets basically, this is the sun, we have all of the planets out over here in one half of, of the um, orbiting cone, which has shifted the entire uh, center of gravity that direction for the entire solar system, as well as shifting all of the interrelated berry spheres between all of the planets over to that side of the solar system. Doesn't mean the solar system's gonna wobble. There's nothing for it to wobble against, so to speak, but it does indeed distort how these energies and where these energies are going to come through and which planets they're gonna hit and in what uh, quantity. And so because of the because of that alignment, because of the way in which the planets are orbiting, and those large gas giants are attracting to um, these kind of energies, uh, all of this kind of stuff, Earth, I know, is going to get an extra large load of them, and it's going to start striking us uh, this very next month. Okay, so, so I'm suspecting that from July, and probably some, let's say the 3rd through the 5th, Somewhere in there, very early in July, uh, so two weeks from now uh, or so, uh, we're going to get uh, into, we, we will have moved astron, or we will have shifted in our orbit uh, two weeks worth of movement, but also the alignment of the other planets is going to create the, the shift, so to speak, where there's a, um, a window of these energies to come right into Earth without other planets sucking them up. Um, so I suspect that we'll, in July, we'll see an increase in all of the uh, strange energies from space and the uh, ag agitation uh, being input to humanity as a result of the extra energies from space coming in July. Now, I suspect also that this energy will be very much um, pro-hormone producing and will be uh, whacking people out even further mentally. And we're going to get into an even more aggressive stance uh, globally. So it wouldn't surprise me that we have uh, fundamental outbreaks of war in uh, July uh, up here. Now, the good news is that this window of... Uh, absorption of these extra energies from space, it winds down and is totally shut um, in December of 2039. However, uh, really, for, for our purposes, in 2031, it starts, it starts shrinking. Okay, so, so in 2031, the tendency from that point on is a reduction uh, in the opportunity to absorb new energies. So still be absorbing them, but, but its peak will have passed by this period of time from analysis of where the planets are going to be and where we're going to be relative to the sun over there. Uh, and that window will be shut in the sense that in 2039, the uh, relationship of the Earth to the Sun, Venus, Ma and um, Mercury will be such that we're no longer prime target, so to speak, for that. We're not out hanging, you know, so we don't actually have our ass hanging out the, the bus window anymore. Uh, we're all snug in with all the other planets at that stage. Um, so we, we have this period of time that we'll have to go through in which we're going to have maximum uh, strange energies from space coming in and I suspect that the way it is with humans, it'll build up, wane, build up, wane, and so on, as the various little temporary um, uh, changes get to us, right? 
anyway, so uh, that was this whole thing about strange energies from space and why it, why it makes sense to participate in it. The vast majority, so, so we have over here the greater sum. Um, let's see that. The greater sum of humanity will be over here in the unconscious side. Uh, there will be those of us that are conscious. You can tell people about it. They can become aware of it. It's not like it's uh, once the thought, it's not like that blocks to the thought, but if they're trapped into the hormones and stuff, they're not going to believe you. If, they're, if they get really trapped in, they're going to identify with uh, ideologies and, and get to be a royal pain in the ass all the way around. This is actually why, I, I, you know, it's one of the reasons I got this Pure Sleep product out there was because I wanted to try and generate more and more people that are a lot more relaxed about shit. Um, because of the nature of the proto-hormones and the pro-hormones, they're effective at night when you're sleeping, right? You take in the energies, then your body has to transmute them very much like vitamin D. So, so it, it affects you at night. It helps you with this kind of shit. I'm not saying it's going to cure you or anything like that. I'm just going to say that you feel better, you feel calmer, you get better sleep. You're not going to be as participating in the unconscious uh, reaction to, to hormones. And, uh, you know, you may do something like, uh, you know, get real smart and change your diet. And, uh, you know, stop sucking down on sugar and all these other cancer-causing things and, and become more fit and, you know, move over here and then, you know, other people will see that you're doing well and maybe they'll move over into the conscious side of things as well. Anyway, though, so this is the timeline. This is the period where you're going to get our first real interaction with it is from the third or the fifth onward. And I suspect because of the, um, uh, the nature of what's going on that, that it will um, show up as a, um, a tendency towards contention. And I'm not going to, I'm also, I, I like contention, I like to fight, I wrestle, uh, you know, judo, all of this kind of stuff all my, all my life, Oops. you know, as you can tell from the years, uh, getting the crap beat out of me. Um, but uh, uh, I'm aware of it, right? And people who don't fight and are not trained they do get into fights. <laughs> All right, so in my, my uh, experience, um, most trained martial, martial artists don't get into fights because we're aware of our, ourselves. We're self-monitoring, uh, we're self-disciplining, we're self-controlling. Uh, we may have to defend ourselves, so you may be in a fight, it may be in a bar when a fight erupts, and just to get yourself out of there, you have to defend yourself, but you're not participating in the fight, right? You don't have a dog in there growling. So um, uh, it's, a, it's a different approach to things, and it, and it comes from being on the conscious side of it. And I'm just uh, basically producing this video to let the individuals that are going to be uh, tending to watch it, uh, the woo-woo crowd and others, um, become aware that you can self-monitor, you can decide to get on this side. And then you start making different decisions, and things start uh, working for you in a different way where you're not fighting these energies all the time and running into your own, uh, you know, you're not digging your, digging a hole in the ground, right? <laughs> so, so basically, we're at that point where, okay, everybody stop digging. Let's crawl out, figure out what the hell's going on. Um, but uh, as a result of the un conscious side of this being the vast majority of humans, I suspect that we will fall into the traps as we have as a species before and go into, you know, become rageaholics and go into to massive wars and all of that kind of stuff. Now is the time, if you're conscious, to start making your decisions and moving out, getting a little bit um, uh, distance and uh, stuff around you. You can smell the bar fight starting to, to you know, that, that smell of uh, you know, anger and all of that kind of stuff starts coming into the air. It's like, okay, guys, <laughs> time to get the fuck out of here and, uh, and calm down about shit. Um, it, there's some very interesting opportunities with these strange energies from space, which I'll go into in other videos. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll see the first indication that um, I'm correct about the positive sides of this uh, as early as maybe mid-August. 
And so I'll go into that as we uh, go forward. A uh, quick um, uh, housekeeping note for uh, those that have um, uh, that are participating in the the closure build uh, output. Um, it's probably going to be the end of next week. I've got legal shit. That damn uh, uh, lawsuit, I've got to review shit in order to be able to get it filed and that kind of thing, right? So we'll get back into the output and analysis of the, um, uh, the closure project here, um, hopefully the end of next week, and we can move forward on that. All right. And...